Hey everyone, it's Tram again, and today I'm going to show you my warm-up routine. I do do this before every training session, so five to six times a week. I start out every session with foam rolling, and the density of your foam roller is going to depend on the surface that you're rolling on. The one that I'm using is pretty dense, and it's just your average foam roller. You can buy it really cheap on Amazon. And uh, what foam rolling does is basically it loosens all the muscles that you're rolling on with your own body weight and it can also eliminate scar tissue and so I just do it all over the place. I don't really foam roll for that long because if you do it for too long it can become ineffective. After foam rolling I go on to uh, warming up my lower body. I start out with standing leg swings and with these you're gonna want to start out small and then work your way up to getting bigger and maybe you'll find that one side is tighter than the other so one leg cannot go as high when I filmed this, which was earlier this week, my left side has been really bothering me and so I really tried to work on that and maybe you can tell a difference in the beginning where it gets a little stuck in my hip socket. After I do them on the side, I just switch, turn around and then do front and back. With these, um, I try to bend my back leg when it's swinging back and try not to straighten it out and this really stretches out my hamstrings and like the front of my quad but I like to hold my hip like you can see so that my hips are not like bobbing all over the place um, you want to keep your hips very square when you're doing this after my legs are all loosey-goosey I like to just grab a bench and then put my back leg on it and start the couch stretch this is a hip flexor and quad stretch you're gonna feel this like right in the front on the top of your quad um, if your the knee on the ground hurts you can put something soft underneath it like a towel or something and when you're doing this, you really want to engage your glutes and stretch your quad. The next stretch is going to require a band. You're just going to put the band up against something stable like a squat rack. I'm using like a jump stand. And then you're going to put your leg through it, put the band underneath your butt cheek, um, high hamstring. And this is going to stretch your hip flexor. You're going to go into a deep lunge. And then uh, instead of leaning your torso, just try to keep your torso straight. But you're definitely going to feel a stretch. Um, in your hip flexor too and this feels really good and you're just supposed to let the band pull you forward but not lean into it too much. I usually do three rounds of stretching with this band and after the first round where my back leg is straight I will bend the back knee actually and then pick it up with my opposite hand. So here my left leg is bent and I pull it back with my right um, hand and if the leg straight for you is obviously way too hard you do not have to try the bent leg variation because that will cause you a lot of pain. And don't worry if your split is not as um, good as mine. A lot of people's aren't and that's okay. The next thing we're going to do is not a stretch but it is actually a strengthening exercise. Your hips are stabilized by a bunch of small muscles and so this one will help your external rotation. What you do is lay on one side and then bend the side that you're laying on's leg 90 degrees from your body, relax the top leg and then move it up. This clip is sped up but you're going to want to do it slow and you're going to feel it on the outside of your glute. What you're going to want to do is lay on your side and cross your outside leg on over your hips and then raise the bottom leg with your toes pointed as much to the ceiling as you can and sometimes when I do this my hip does pop so maybe yours will pop too. Okay, the next stretch is called the Iron Cross. This one feels amazing too. What you're going to do is lay on your back with your arms straight out. Obviously, there's a mat right there, so I can't lay with my arms completely flat. Put your palms up, and then first raise your leg up so it's 90 degrees from your body, and then try to cross and get as close to your palms as possible. Sometimes people's backs are not flexible enough and they can't touch their palms. That's okay. Um, and then the other variation of this is the scorpion stretch, and it's basically the same thing. You just do it on your stomach, and this will feel really good um, like somebody is wringing out your back. The next exercise is super simple and very easy to neglect, but is also very important. There are wrist circles, and what you're going to want to do is lace your fingers together and move your wrists 10 motions in one direction and then 10 the other way. I do them with both wrists at the same time and then individually too, and it feels really good. To continue our warm up, we're going to do arm circles um, 10 one direction then attend the other way. The same with the leg circles, you're going to want to start out small and then get bigger. When I first started doing arm circles, it's kind of embarrassing, but like these would make me sweat so bad because my shoulder mobility was awful. And so if you really want to open up your shoulders, this is really awesome too. And then I'm just doing some forward and backward swings in between my arm circles and I feel like this really helps too to just break up the movement. Here's just another angle of my arm circles. You can tell that one of my shoulders is elevated higher than the other one and that obviously my shoulders can't move back very far. 
This is a really big area of what I'm trying to work on is really stabling my shoulder girdle. The next thing that I'm doing is called T-swings, and you can't really tell because you can't see my lower body, but when I turn to each side, my hips are rotating with it. These swings really open your posterior and anterior shoulders. The next thing I'm doing is another gym staple, I would say. It is the dumbbell curl. I'm only using a five pound weight. So your shoulder um, socket is a ball and socket joint, which is really awesome because it can move in a lot of different directions and it's very flexible. Because it's so flexible, it needs a lot of muscles to stabilize it and hold it in place. And since I am pretty flexible, like overall my joints are pretty flexible, um, I need a lot of work really working on those muscles that hold all my joints together so that I'm more stable. And I see that these um, dumbbell curls and uh, really basic shoulder presses and what you're going to see in a little bit, um, dumbbell tricep extensions really help with that. And I don't really do that many. I only do like 10 on each side with a five pound dumbbell every day. And it really does help. And with these like smaller PT exercises, you don't have to use a lot of weight to see results. You just have to do it consistently and do a lot of reps. To test out my new mobility, I just do some hip circles and make sure that I'm moving in like really big circles. Obviously start out small. And generally I should feel pretty good at this point and you should too. And then I do some air RDLs with just my body and move around like kind of like a teeter-totter. It's kind of funny. But then I just do a basic runner stretch, which is where you pull your ankle to your butt and kind of hold it there and then stretch out your hips. And that will conclude today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I tried to make it as short and concise as possible, so I didn't really go into detail, but I think you guys should get the overall gist. Let me know if you have any questions and if you guys have any exercises that you think I should try out, any modifications, stuff like that, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!